Now this illustration deals with size or supply side conductors and a single raceway or cable in accordance with uh, 250.102C1. Now before we get into the illustration, notice this table is uh, highlighted, table 250.102C1. But notice the information uh, in the table. It, you know, if we review the very top portion uh, of the table, it talks about the grounded conductor, main bonding jumper, system bonding jumper, and supply side bonding jumper for AC current systems. Now, this, this information tells you exactly how we would use this table to size those items. And then it drops down below that information and talks about to the left, the size of the largest ungrounded conductor or equivalent area for parallel conductors. And it gives you the AWG when that's used and the KC mill ratings. To the right now, it talks about the size of the grounded conductor or bonding jumper. And again, giving you the, the AWG size along with the KC mill rating. Now, this conductor there were, that we're talking about that size of the grounding or bonding jumper is to provide an effective ground fault path to transfer fault currents when they occur. And then in the table, you notice we list copper, aluminum, uh, which would be your uh, ungrounded phase conductors entering into the service equipment, uh, or we would uh, also give the uh, conductor size in aluminum or copper to deal uh, with seismic based upon the service entrance conductors. Now, with that information uh, kind of uh, mentioned here, let's take a look now at the service. Now, notice the service equipment at the very top talks about the service panel and service disconnect. And then notice we have a transformer that's a separately derived system. But it wouldn't make any difference. It, it could be a transformer located outside like a utility or a customer-owned transformer in accordance with 250.24A as in Apple II. But we're talking about 250.30 and then the definition of a separately derived system in Article 100. And notice here we, we list the system bonding jumper. Now, if that transformer was located outside, then, and that was service equipment, instead of being uh, identified as a system bonding jumper, it would be identified as a main bonding jumper. But since it's a separately derived system, then it's the, this system bonding jumper is talked about in 250.30A1 little a, but it's sized based upon table 250.102C1. Then notice to the left we have structural steel that uh, meets the requirements of a grounding electrode in accordance with 250.30A4 item number two. We also have listed then the grounding electrode conductor, 250.30A5, if we're using the table, 250.66. If we're not using the table, 250.66, to select the electrode, whichever's present, we would use 250.66A through C that we've discussed it. Then notice the grounded conductor itself. It is isolated in that panel board in accordance with 408.40, which is listed as one of these sections below the grounded neutral conductor, isolated in the panel. And we're looking at 250.142A as an apple three and 250.30A as an apple three. Now, uh, we size everything by table 250.102C1. Now next, we would look at the system bonding jumper to the right bottom side of the service equipment uh, or the panel board in this case. 
and it talks about the system uh, supply side bonding jumper. Now notice that's bonding the raceway uh, into the ground did bar that's bonded into the can. And it says, use a number two based upon the 350 kc mill. Now, how did we come up with that? We'll just review the table. We have 250 kc mill conductors uh, tapped off the secondary side of that transformer, which the code calls transformer secondary conductors. So in the table illustrated there, you see over 3 aught through 350, circled is the 350, and it's bow-faced. And then you fall over, uh, just, uh, well, fall over, just uh, horizontally move over uh, to the number two, and that's where it comes from. Now, what we're saying, for the purpose of a path for the available uh, short circuit current, an effective ground fault path, and the transfer of uh, fault currents if they should occur, everything in the panel board that you see there would be number two. The only way we may have a conductor smaller would be if, for example, the grounding electrode conductor identified there is 250.66A, which could be a driven rod, 250.66B, which could be a concrete encased electrode, and it would be number four, or uh, 250.66C, which would uh, be a number two, uh, in some cases. So you'd either have uh, six, four, or two AWG copper conductors, and then, of course, you may have a conductor that may be uh, smaller uh, with 250.66A and B, as illustrated in the illustration. Now, I would like to point out that if this table was 250.66, now then, the information at the very top of the table would talk about the grounding electrode conductor. It would not mention any of the other items that you see listed there in table 250.102C1. If, for example, we had an overcurrent device now ahead of the conductors that at the, uh, say, at the transformer below it, whatever, fusible disconnect, whatever it may be, now we'd go to table 250.122 and we'd size the, old, uh, the equipment grounding conductor uh, based upon the size of the overcurrent device. So it is a mandatory thing that designers, electricians, contractors, and inspectors understand these three tables. Table 250.66, sizing the grounding electrode conductor. Table 250.102C1 is strictly sizing those items you see listed uh, above the table there. Uh, table 250.122 is when there's an overcurrent device ahead of your conductors, and you would size an equipment ground based upon the overcurrent device that's protecting the conductors uh, in the equipment in many cases. So uh, let's be sure that we understand these three tables. Now, there's not any way I'm saying you don't already understand that, but I'm saying if you don't, then please review them and understand how each table is applied based upon the conditions of use. And that's what this figure 16-102 is illustrating.